Let's talk about faders. Actually, I need to talk a lot about faders because there's so much you can do with them and I've received a ton of questions about them. So I'm splitting this up into a series with more videos coming very soon. For this series, just like I did in my sequence videos, I've made a capture presentation file as well as a blackout file that you can download on your computer, either Mac or PC. You don't need to download capture. You can just download the file and use it right away with your iPad as long as your iPad and the computer running the capture presentation file are on the same network. We're gonna start off super simple, just talking about all the button options you have for your faders. Let's get into it. Okay, here we are in the file. You can see I already have a fader for my main sequence with some looks made. We're gonna make two looks real quick. I'm gonna to come to my groups, grab my bulbs, I'll set them to full, and I'll come to fixture controls and make them really blue, and I will record a new look. So I'll change this to sequence two now, and I'll call this flash, and that looks good. And I'll select manual values only, so I only save the manual values in this new sequence, and I'll save. I can see my values turn yellow, which means they're controlled by a fader that I don't have selected. So I'll come up here to my main sequence and switch over to the flash sequence I just created. Now I'm just going to change these to be warmer. So we have a warm flash and I'll record again. I'll do manual values only and I'll call this look warm flash. Okay, great. And we'll save that. So now if I go to my fader page, I can see I have a second sequence fader created. At the bottom, I can see the buttons that Blackout already assigns. Because Blackout knows this is a sequence fader, it gives me a play and a back button. You can see if I hit play here, it'll cycle me through the two looks. If I hit back, it'll reverse me through the two looks. You can see this is the same for this other sequence, so I go through chronologically and I can go back chronologically as well. Okay. So let's take a look at some of the other buttons we can assign. To assign a button to an empty space, you can press and hold up top here and you'll get the button type pop up. You can also press and hold on the fader itself and assign the buttons in the position you'd like. For example, if we wanted to get rid of the play button and just switch it to none, we could do that and then save. And you can see this is a now empty button. I can come here and press and hold and reassign it to play and save. Okay, so what are the button types? The first button type is none, which is empty. It doesn't do anything. The next button type is flash. And for flash, we get three options. Flash return, flash on, and flash off. A flash button means when you're holding it, the fader goes to 100, and when you let go, the fader will return to one of the states you've specified. So if we do flash return, the fader will return to whatever state it was last in. Let's test that out. So here I can see the fader is at 100 and off. If I flash and let go, it returns to that state. If I double tap to toggle it on and move it to the middle, if I flash, it'll go to 100 and I let go, it returns on and to the middle. If I double tap to turn it off and I flash and I let go, you'll see it returns to that state as well. If I press and hold here and go into my flash settings by clicking on it and change it to flash on, as you can see, the fader is off right now, but if I flash it, and let go, it stays on. Flash stays on. If I press and hold and click my flash and change it to flash off and save, if I turn it on and flash it, it will turn off. Let's look at temp. Temp stands for temporary and allows you to set specific timings for your fader. I'll keep it on auto for now and save. And you can see if I start the fader at zero and hold temp, it will come up for one second. And when I let go, it'll go down for one second. You can adjust these settings in the temp settings. If I click here, you can see my uptime is one second, my downtime is one second, and it has no wait time before transitioning down. If you switch this to manual, you'll have to tap again to send the fader back down. So if I save that now and I temp it up, it goes up. If I tap it again, it'll go down. Tap up, tap again, it goes down. That's temp. Of course, you can assign these to any times you'd like. Toggle does the same thing as double tapping the fader. It either turns it on or off depending on what state it was last in. If I save that, you can see it's off right now because it's grayed out. If I hit toggle, it turns on. If I hit toggle again, it turns off. Toggle on, toggle off. I'll skip black for now to say that on and off do exactly what you expect. I'll set one button to on and I'll set this top button to off. And now if I save this and turn the fader on, it'll turn on and I can use off to turn it off. 
Okay, let's look at black now. I'll change this off to a black. Black is the reverse of flash. So while you're holding it, the fader will go to zero, and when you let go, it will release. So here, I'll send the fader to 100, and then hold the black button. It goes down. When I let go, it releases back. Next is cell fix. Cell fix stands for select fixtures, and it will just select via command line all the fixtures that have data within that fader, and this works for all types of faders. Let's try it out. I'll save this as cell fix. I'll clear my command line. And then if I click this button, you can see in the bottom, it will select all my bulbs. If I press and hold on this sequence and add a cell fix button, you can see if I click cell fix, it will also add all the fixtures in that sequence. This is a super helpful button to have on your hardware, like a stream deck or a keyboard, because in your main sequence, I can just hit cell fix and then use the master scroll wheel to dim everything up or down. I'll hit cell fix here, and then I can be in my fixture page and use the master scroll wheel to dim everything down or dim everything up. Super awesome. Let's pick a new button. Next, we have macro, which is not yet implemented, but that will allow you to set a macro to trigger from this button. Next, we have play and back. As we saw before, these are auto assigned on every sequence fader. Of course, you can change them, but they play through looks with respect to timing. I'll double tap looks to give my sequence some timing. And then coming back to my fader page, I can see the timing activates when I hit play. If you want your sequence to use timing when you go back, you can change this in blackout settings by toggling default back button behavior to look timing. Next, we have the fast back and fast forward buttons. These are just like play and back, except they ignore look timing. These will allow you to quickly go through your looks while ignoring any timing you've set. Top will take you to your first look in the sequence. Let's take a look at that. Here, I'm on my last look. If I select top, I'll go back to my first look with respect to timing. I'll change top to go to, and go to allows you to pick which look you're in from a list. I'll tap go to, and now I can pick between any look and go to them with respect to look timing. Last is select. I'll put select on both sequences, and select just allows me to switch between sequences. Right now, if I go to my fixture page, I can see I'm in my main sequence. If I go to my fader page and now select, this bar up here indicates which sequence is selected. If I select sequence two here, this bar changes. And if I come out here, I can see I'm now in that sequence. Again, this is another really useful button to have mapped to hardware. So if you have a bunch of different sequences and you need to update one, you can select that sequence and then update. If I come to this fader three and load a fixture and select an empty button, you'll see you're given just the options that apply to a fixture fader. So that's a bit of a speed run of all the fader buttons. Hope that was helpful. In upcoming videos, we'll look at the entire fader page UI, the settings in the fader configuration, and of course, the fader priorities. Let me know in the comments what you want to see more of, and I'll see you next time.